Thank you so much for being part of The Last Days, a Reformation and Eschatology e-course. And I thank you so much for being part of this live coaching. I've enjoyed this thoroughly. I hope that this e-course has taught you a lot, especially about how you can draw near to Jesus despite or in spite of what is taking place around the world, no matter what's going on in our life. We could focus on him through it all and that he's always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And that uh, I hope that you've been encouraged in knowing and understanding the different viewpoints of eschatology, which is the study of the last things, the study of the end times. Uh, I hope that you've been challenged even. I know that, I pretty much know that you've been stretched. And I hope that you benefited quite a bit from the personal studies, whether it's on the number on the number 1000, whether it was on the mark of the beast, or and even watch the extra videos with my friends, Paul Wilde offering an interesting viewpoint, according to him about America in Bible prophecy. I hope that you made up your own mind about that after I've guided you through how to study apocalyptic and prophetic literature and context and things like that. And also, I hope you enjoyed my friend Jimmy Schools, who's an incredible guy, about his journey, where he's landed in eschatology, and even with my friend uh, Jake Kale on your identity. And that's what I, why I wanted to end the course, how I wanted to end the course was you knowing whose you are and who you are in Jesus. For the final coaching for this evening, I really wanted to focus on how the book of Revelation is a book about Jesus. Uh, chapter one, verse one, it's called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. And this book is all about Jesus. I think that the modern day church, we've kind of got our wires crossed. We've kind of uh, mixed things up, thinking that the book of Revelation is a book about the end of the world when it's really about the revelation of Jesus Christ. We see really bad things being mentioned, being prophesied. And in my view, it's uh, for the early church, for those times, that generation, uh, it was giving them warning about what was to come within a generation's time, about a 40 year time frame from when Jesus died to the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, but it showed encouragement and it always returned back to Jesus. It's about Jesus. It reveals Jesus. Some people might ask uh, where I would stand in eschatology. So I've never come, you know, mentioned where I stand um, through the e-course, but I can tell you guys that I think that most of the events of the book of Revelation and Matthew chapter 24 Mark 13 and Luke 21 have been fulfilled uh, 2,000 years ago by 70 AD. However, I do believe Jesus is coming back. I believe that that's really one of the only things uh, yet to be fulfilled. And so in our day and age, we live under the new covenant. We live under the covenant of grace. We live uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit in us and through us for the glory of Jesus we have the opportunity to preach the gospel around the world and everywhere that we go. And we can operate with signs and wonders following us. I believe in the modern day prophetic gift. I, I believe that we need to know who we are in Jesus and who he is through us. And that, um, we minister in love. We minister in grace that no matter what is taking place in the world, whether it's wars rumors of wars, politics, governmental governments rising and falling, no matter what is taking place, our hope is sealed in Jesus. I've been to several wars, Iraq and Afghanistan. So Iraq in 2007, 2008, Afghanistan in 2009, and even recently back in Afghanistan, uh, here recently in uh, September of 2020 through January of 2021. So, um, I know that Jesus is with us no matter where we are, wherever you are in the world, he's with you no matter what is taking place in the government, in the political arena in your world, in the media arena, whatever it is, he's with you. 
your job is to spend time with him. Your job is to tell others about him and shine the light of Jesus. So maybe you're facing persecution. If you're in the underground church, if you're watching this in the underground church, I bless you and I pray for you constantly. Uh, whether you're in the Iranian underground church, the Chinese underground church, if your your church is having a hideout, I'm praying for you and I'm cheering you on. Uh, Jesus is with you. So I believe that Jesus is coming back. I really do. And we have something to look forward to. When it comes to the book of Revelation and this e-course and this life coaching, I wanted to end on a high note focused on Jesus. Uh, so I do appreciate your questions at the end of this. And also you could email me any of your questions that you may have, any of your concerns, any things that you need some light to be shed upon. I'm here to serve. Okay. So I bless you in Jesus name. So I wanted to start with Revelation chapter one. I wanted to focus on Jesus, who this whole e-course and the book Revelation is about Chapter 1, verse 1 of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is who this book is about. This book is not about what. It's not about what. It's about a person. It's about Jesus. The name of the book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Some Bibles may say the apocalypse of Jesus Christ. Some may even shorten it, like mine here says revelation, but the original name is the revelation of Jesus Christ right there in chapter one, verse one. The book of Revelation reveals Jesus at the very beginning. In chapter one, verse nine, it says, I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation, in the tribulation, that is very key to see here. John was in the tribulation and he's prophesying other events within that tribulation. Some people call this the seven-year tribulation. So he's in the tribulation. But I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Now, here's the amazing part that comes up. So this book is being written to these seven churches. These prophecies were being written to these seven churches. So we can take the principles learned from this, but we need to understand the book of Revelation is written to these original seven churches. But in verse 12, then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Within the text, we see the answers, what the seven golden lampstands are, what the seven stars are. It's to the seven churches that then he reaches out to, he sends these letters to, and then he receives more of the vision of the book of Revelation. But this is beginning with Jesus in all his glory, in all his glory. Can you imagine this in your mind, seeing Jesus in all his glory? The hairs of his head white, like white wool, like snow, his flames of fire, his feet burnished bronze. This is amazing. This is simply phenomenal. And then it goes into the letters 
about um, some persecutions, about some tough times, about some heretics even, the, the Nicolaitans, they're Judaizers. There are people following this false prophet by uh, similar to Jezebel. It wasn't the actual Jezebel, but very similar to the practices that Jezebel in the Old Testament had. And so these people were having to deal with persecution verbally, emotionally, all kinds of things. And Jesus was giving them hope and Jesus was pointing them to him. And as, as I mentioned on the e-course, we always see these, these patterns in the book of Revelation. It begins with Jesus and then shares these events, uh, bad things, famines, pestilences, different things that are terrifying. But it always goes back to Jesus. It goes back to Jesus as the lamb. It goes back to Jesus you know, in all his glory. We see this in Revelation chapter four. So in the first few chapters, you know, we see Jesus writing through the apostle John to these seven churches and giving them warnings and giving them instructions and giving them things that they're supposed to do uh, in the tribulation that they're experiencing. But in chapter four, verse one, it says, after this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven and the first door were, and the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what, what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the thrones were 24 thrones and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their head. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire which are the seven spirits of God. But remember the text shows us what the seven torches of fire are, which is the seven spirits of God, which I talked about in last week's coaching. And before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And then there's all these beings worshiping Jesus in all his glory, in all his glory. So this is just simply amazing. You know, some people tend in uh, some different viewpoints on eschatology tend to interpret Revelation chapter four, uh, verse one with Jesus saying, come up here. They interpret that as the rapture. I, I know I had a whole teaching course on what the, what the rapture really is. I hope that you were able to interpret scripture and, and compare cloud cloud terminology in the old testament and the new testament and come up with a, a grasp as to what the rapture really is but when we see this in chapter 4 verse 1 this is not to the church this is to john the apostle this applies to john the apostle jesus says come up here and i will show you what must take place and then then john is taken into the spirit. He's in the spirit already, and he sees the throne. He sees uh, he sees this in heaven. He sees the one seated there in all his glory. He sees the beings around the throne. I'd really love for you, you to get a grasp of what that could look like about Jesus in his glory, what John was seeing. You know, so uh, this, this verse is apply, uh, applicable only to John. It is in no reference to the rapture. We can't even, we would break the rules of biblical interpretation if we say John represents the church, and then that's the church in the future. But there are people who, God bless them, they, they think that this applies, that is paradigmatic, meaning it's a pattern or it's uh, John symbolizing the future church and a future rapture, but in no way uh, is this in reference to the rapture. This is just to John, and then it happens, and he sees Jesus in all his glory. So when people interpret this as the rapture, I think that that's quite the stretch, but um, I want you guys to see that this began with Jesus then several chapters later, after the seven churches receive their instructions, receive their letters, it starts with Jesus again. Here's Jesus in all his glory. And then in chapter five, we see the lamb, the lamb of God, Jesus. 
the, the redeemer of all mankind. And so there's things that beginning to happen. John is now seeing a little more about what is yet to come, what is to soon take place. So that's in Revelation chapter four, Jesus starts showing him more things, revealing more about him, uh, his character, his traits, but also events as well that were to come. But all that, there's so many things coming, you know, but some people tend to get caught up in the seven woes, the, the judgments, uh, things like that, the seven bowls of God's wrath, all kinds of things. Now, these are important. This whole book is very important to read, to read aloud, to listen to, to talk to people about, to study, as all the scriptures are. The whole counsel of the word of God, all of it is important to study, to know, to understand, and to grow with others in it. But I know that to what we've been going through uh, recently, a lot of people are asking questions, and that's why I wanted to bring a message of hope, the message of hope in Jesus alone, no matter what's taking place in the world. Uh, you know, uh, people will take comfort in going back to the book of Revelation, looking at eschatology throughout the Bible, and asking questions if this applies now, if this applies today. My point here is to point to Jesus, that in their time, John was pointing them. He's saying these bad things are going to come, but Jesus is in his glory. Here's the here's the King of Kings. Here's the Lord of Lords. So in Revelation 19, we see that Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. This is this is amazing. There's all these things taking place, and we can take comfort in, in this, no matter what's taking place around us, surrounding us, and no matter what was taking place then at that time. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 begins saying, Then I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, are following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword. Remember chapter one, with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the almighty on his robe and on his thigh. He has a name written King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And as you see that he's the King with the capital K in the English Bible and the Lord with a capital L and he's the King of Kings, the lowercase Kings is everybody else presidents, dignitaries, you name it. He is the king of it all. So he is superior above all governing authorities. He's superior to everything that man and systems of man, or even the system of the beast um, has. Jesus is king of kings. He's Lord of lords, and he brings righteousness. He judges, and he makes war. He could strike down nations with his spoken word with the, the things spoken out of his mouth with the sword that penetrates. We know that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. Uh, Hebrews chapter four, uh, verse 12. And then we see verse 13. The, that is in reference to Jesus, the word of God, the person of Jesus. A lot of people tend to say that they're saying that, that that's quoting the scripture in context. In Hebrews chapter 1, you see the context. It's all about Jesus. You see this throughout it. In Hebrews chapter 4, even at the very beginning of part of that chapter, and even that middle section there, chapter 4, verse 12, 13, he judges the thoughts and intentions of people's heart. The word of God, the logos of God, John chapter 1, the word of God, who's Jesus, who came in the flesh, is the same word being spoken of in Hebrews chapter 4. Jesus is the word of God piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, that sword, that word of the Lord, right here, Jesus, the sword, the word of the Lord, amen, the Logos word. 
So here's all these things taking place, but here's Jesus in his glory. Here's Jesus, the King of Kings. Here's Jesus, the King over your situations. Here's Jesus, King over all governing authorities. Here's Jesus, who's King of Kings and Lord of Lords and puts all de demonic principalities and powers in their place, the systems of the beast, the systems of the world, the systems of the Antichrist. They're all underneath him. He treads on, on, lion, on snakes and scorpions. They're under his feet. And now that we're in him and we're in Christ, the enemy's under our feet. We trample on snakes and scorpions. We put the enemy under our feet. We're seated with Christ far above all principalities and power. We, we to proclaim and we war from a place of victory because of Jesus his sacrifice on the cross, his atoning sacrifice for our sins. And from that position of authority, from, from, from sitting with him, being seated with him, we look down on the enemy. We, we look down on our situations. We overcome because of what Jesus has done. And we're, we're hanging out with him in the heavenlies. So that is our positional spiritual authority. So no matter what's taking place financially, governmentally, politically, nationally, personally, we are seated with him. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he comes in all his great glory and his great power. But then revelation has be, began with Jesus. We've seen Jesus throughout the pages. Um, and you could, you know, reread it yourself, listen to it again, and just see how many times it brings up and reveals more of Jesus, more of his personality, more of his character traits, more of him in his glory. And then it ends with Jesus in Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Love this. So Revelation chapter 1, it began with Jesus. Revelation chapter 22, it ends with Jesus from verse 6 to verse 21. And he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. So the book is a prophecy. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. Ooh, bummer. But he said to me, you must not do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book, worship God. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filth filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, these words are in red. So they're the words of Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates, outside of the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come, let the one who's thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, to the words of the prophecy in the book of Revelation, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the book of Revelation, Jesus, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, surely I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. So this book, the revelation of Jesus Christ, began with Jesus. He's throughout its pages. Jesus is the word of God. And it ends with Jesus. It reveals him from beginning to end and throughout its pages. And at the time it was written, it was on scrolls. It was on scrolls or in time papyrus, uh, you know, which, be, which eventually we started getting pages similar to that. So it begins with Jesus. It ends with Jesus. It's a book about Jesus. 
It's a book about events at that time that we could take principles from and understand them and see that no matter what is taking place in our life, Jesus is King, Jesus is Lord. So I hope that this blesses you. I wanted to end this coaching with that on a high note, glorifying Jesus, our King. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And uh, I'd love to move forward into the question and answer time and see what the Holy Spirit has for us. And also, if you watch this later on your time, please feel free to email me, Jared, J-R-E-D, at firebornministries.com. I'm just here to serve you, and I bless you. And thanks again for being part of The Last Days, a Reformation in Eschatology e-course and coaching.